I have a confession to make. I have never read the Percy Jackson series by Rick Riordan. I don't know how this has happened. I don't know why this has happened. I know I'm gonna love this series and I know that if I'd have read it as a child, I probably would have loved it then as well, but I just didn't. So for this video, I'm gonna be reading the first five books in the Percy Jackson series. I'm aware that this is four books, but here, here is the first book. It's just that this was so difficult to get out of this casing that I don't wanna put it back in because I, I don't think I could get it back out again very easily. It's like they don't actually want you to read the books because they are packed tight in there. I have, no idea what editions these are, by the way. I've had people ask this before when I've talked about them in a video. I got them off of Amazon, I think, years ago. That's how long I've been intending to read this series. So I'm not sure what they are, sorry, but they do look pretty cool. Although now that there's more books out, I've realized that it's gonna be mismatching on my shelves, but that's fine. So I've never read this series. I have read the Magnus Chase series by Rick Riordan and I really enjoyed that. So I know I enjoy Rick Riordan's writing style. And actually I have before read the first book in this series years ago. I don't know why I didn't continue on with the series and I can't really remember the reading experience. And whilst I have watched the film a lot, I am really looking forward to diving back into this because I feel like it is still going to be quite fresh in my brain and feel like a new reading experience. This series is following Percy Jackson who discovers that he is a demigod. His mum is a mortal and his dad is immortal. <laughs> he goes on a load of adventures in this series discovering more about who he is, what he can do and this whole world that's unlocked that he didn't even know existed. I cannot wait because this has everything I love in it. This is why I'm so surprised I haven't read this series already. So. That's a little bit of an overview. This is gonna be a spoilery vlog because I think it's gonna be really difficult to talk about this series without giving you spoilers because even telling you what each book past the first one is about is probably gonna spoil the events of the first one in some way or the previous books in some way. So this is gonna contain spoilers just to let you know. I wanna be able to talk about each of the books fully with you. Also, I was chatting with Gavin recently and we realized that we were both doing similar reading vlogs for this series in advance of the Disney Plus series coming out. So Gavin from Gavin Reads It All, formerly How to Train Your Gavin, is also doing a reading vlog for this series. So go and check out Gavin's channel if you haven't already, because honestly, Gavin's videos are the best and I can't wait to be able to see Gavin's vlog for this series as well. This is also day six of Vlogmas, but it's the first Vlogmas video I'm filming, so the order is a bit skewy, but I really hope you've been enjoying Vlogmas so far as well. I have actually started book one already. I wanted to give myself a little bit of a jump start because there is about 1,400 pages across this series, roughly, that I'm gonna be reading over the next two weeks, and I'm a little bit daunted by that. The writing style flows really well, but still, that's a lot of pages, and I am definitely slightly daunted. Book one, as I said, is a reread, but Honestly, I can't really remember the details from the first time reading it, and mainly the details that stick in my head are from the film, which already are slightly different in direction than the book has taken so far. I really enjoyed the film. I'm just gonna say that now. I know that's probably an unpopular opinion. I know a lot of people didn't like it. Maybe it was because I hadn't read the book to be able to compare it to, and I know that there are a lot of differences and I can already see those, as I've said, including, for example, the ages of the characters is a lot older in the films than it is in the book. And I know that that is something that they have stayed true to from the book in the TV series, which is really good to see. So I, I don't know, I liked the film. So that is very much what's in my head reading this at the moment. But so far, I'm really liking it. I love the the friendly nature of it. It feels like a warm hug of a book at the moment. And I love the fact that we've got high stakes introduced already. I really enjoy seeing the different children of the different gods and goddesses. And I just, I just think that's so much fun. And I also like the dynamic between the characters being a little bit different to the way I've seen it and have interpreted it from the film. I quite like that. I think that's giving me a little bit of a different take on it and is making it feel more fresh and interesting to read because usually when I've watched a film already before reading a book, which I try not to do too often, I like to read the book first when I can, but usually I find that it kind of leaves me not as intrigued to pick up the book because I know where it's going. Whereas I feel like this one's already gone in different directions. So hopefully will continue to keep me hooked in that way. I'm more excited for the rest of the series though because I have no idea where those rest of the books go. I actually don't think I ever watched the second film, which is very strange to me because I really, really liked the first film when I was younger. So I don't know why I've never watched the second one. I don't think I have. I don't know, but regardless, I'm not gonna watch that until I have at least read the second book, but I'm really excited to see where the rest of the stories go as well. One thing I will say is, so initially Percy is, he arrives at Camp Half-Blood, which is the safe place for him once he kind of 
starts to realise that something's something's not quite going right, there's some danger following him, he doesn't really know what's happening, he doesn't understand that he is a demigod yet, and he arrives in Camp Half-Blood and this is all kind of thrown at him, but they're not at this point sure who his dad is. And we, like, I know that his dad is Poseidon because I've watched the films and just generally, like, you know, that's what you know about this series, but none of the other campers realise this, despite the fact that he is doing all these kind of accidental things with water. It takes them so long to clock onto this. I just find that kind of funny. Like there was this whole scene where this girl's trying to put his head in the toilet or something like that. Like she's trying to put him in the toilet and he ends up trying to make like the toilet water come out of the toilet and attack her. And everybody's watching this, including Annabeth, who is the daughter of Athena, who is the goddess of wisdom, and nobody notices, nobody thinks, oh, he managed to control the water, maybe he's the son of Poseidon. I'm <laughs> slightly like, really guys? And it took them for the water to heal Percy in the middle of the Capture the Flag game to be like, oh, oh. So yeah, that's that part I was kind of like, really guys, come on, come on. But it, I'm still, I'm really liking it and I'm really excited to keep going with it. It's just such an easy, fun writing style. I was actually reading it in the gym this morning. I was on the cross trainer and I had it on my Kindle. I had the font up absolutely massive because it was like jiggling about as I was running. So I was trying to be able to see it. But that was actually great because it meant that I could really get fully absorbed into it without any distractions. And I was just like zoning into it. And it meant I got to read more. So that was a win. I'm probably gonna continue doing that. I've got the whole series on my Kindle as well as the physical formats because I am going about a couple of places or have been and will continue to be going about a couple of places last week and this coming week, so I wanted to be able to have it easily accessible. So I'm probably gonna move between the physical and the digital format, but I'm excited. This is obviously gonna be a pretty chatty vlog because I'm gonna give you my thoughts and feelings as I'm reading each book, like at the start, middle, end, just giving you general updates. So yeah, get some snacks, settle in, I'm excited. the point where they go to the Lotus Hotel which I'm so excited about because that was like my favourite bit in the film. I think that was done so well and it was so fun. So they've just got to that part in the book. Can I just say the chapter headings in this book are fantastic. I absolutely love them. I mean, the chapter one right now, hang on. Where's my bookmark? So this is the title chapter of what I'm on right now. We take a zebra to Vegas. But we've also had some cracking ones. I really enjoyed this one. We get advice from a poodle. They're just so fun. I'm having a great time reading this so far. Being able to read at the gym this week has been a little bit of a godsend for me. <laughs> I've been bringing my Kindle with me to the gym where I also have a compendium bind up of the Percy Jackson series, the first five books anyway. And I've been reading that whilst I'm on the cross trainer or on the bike. And it just means that not only am I starting my day off with a trip to the gym, but also with about like half an hour of reading. So that's been really helpful. And this morning I finished book one, The Lightning Thief. I really enjoyed this. I can now see why people don't like the film as much. It's interesting to see how they change things in the film because I don't know how they could have done the whole series from the plot they set up in the first film because they completely removed the idea of Kronos and the further element of the war, I think, unless I'm misremembering it. But by the end of this, you've had the threat of Kronos introduced and you've got the idea that there's something more at play and that the Olympians or some of the demigods are kind of being spoken to and manipulated and you just don't really have that in the film to be able to lay the work for the rest of the series. Also, a lot of scenes and adventures removed from the book in the film and some kind of changed and added. I will say I prefer the Medusa scene in the film. I liked that they used her reflection against her. I thought that was really clever. I also really wanted more from the Lotus Casino scene because in the film I really enjoyed that and I think that was such good fun. And I suppose maybe more because it was visually really fun that it was more interesting for me and in the book it was like half of a chapter but it was still a good time. I really enjoyed this and I liked that we got to see more adventures from the trio and more storylines introduced, more characters. 
Aries. We got to meet Aries and I have can only envisage Aries as being played by the actor that plays Negan in The Walking Dead. <laughs> like that is just who Aries is in my head and I can't unsee it now. So and in full Negan get up as well, like that's just, that's Aries. <laughs> I really am excited to see more from these characters and I'm really glad that I felt intrigued throughout this as well because it kept surprising me by going in different routes from the routes that the film took. I never really knew what path it was taking, I just knew how or like where it was going. I didn't know how it was going to get there but I knew like some sort of summary of the ending but actually even the ending I knew from the film was different from the ending in the book so that was quite interesting. I wish that we have seen some of the things like the battle with Ares in the film because I feel like that would have been really epic and I think again the, the change of direction certainly changed the tone for the films going forward and probably is why we didn't get more films. I'd be interested to know whether they did intend to make more films and just didn't. I, I want to know what happened there or if they only intended to make, was it two they made? I'm gonna google it. Yeah only the two films and then obviously the Disney Plus series coming out this year which I'm so excited about. The last film was 2013. <sighs> first one was 2010. Oh, it's so long ago now. I do need to watch the second film and just kind of understand whether maybe they introduced some of those plot points into the second film. Because they're just not setting it up for the whole like Kronos Titan situation. It just, it's bugging me slightly. <laughs> I still enjoy the film. It's fun. But the book definitely gives you a bit more. I'm looking forward to seeing how this trio develops as the series goes on. I, I love them so much, especially Annabeth. Annabeth is definitely my favourite character and I'm looking forward to seeing how the adventures change them and we see them grow from those adventures and I'm hoping that we get to see Grover and Annabeth getting even more involved in those adventures. I'm looking forward to it so much. Rick Ryden's writing style is so approachable, so fun and so humorous. It just makes for such a good reading experience. And I'm so excited to continue on with this series. So that is book one of the first five in the Percy Jackson series finished. I gave it 4.5 out of five stars, which honestly is higher than I expected to give it going into this series. But I had a great time reading it. It does mean I'm going to be starting the Sea of Monsters. I read a whole whopping one chapter of the Sea of Monsters whilst I was still at the gym this morning. But this is very new territory for me now. I have no idea what happens in the story going forward. And I'm so excited to find out. Look, last week the new Call of Duty game came out and I got it on release day and ever since then I haven't been able to stop playing it with my evenings and I fully intended to read the whole of Sea of Monsters tonight. I really, I really did. <laughs> but reality is I started Loki season two and then I played Modern Warfare 3 for like the last few hours and now I'm sat here with regrets because I did have a good time, yes, but I haven't read a single page since I last spoke to you. <laughs> I'm going to see Jade tomorrow. You guys know Jade, Jade Ray reads, and that's quite a drive. So I'm thinking audiobook, maybe. It seems silly to get the second one on audiobook because it's the smallest, and I think the audiobook is like six to seven hours, and that's not considering like listening to it sped up. So I feel like that's just silly, but at the same time, I will be able to finish that probably just on the drive there, to be honest. And then maybe download the third one for the drive back. I don't know. I'm my own hubris at this point, and I know that, but I am having a good time, so it's fine. <laughs> I'm just meant to be reading. <laughs> good morning. I am heading off to Jade's very shortly. It's lovely and rainy outside, which is super nice driving weather. I have actually got only two and a half hours left in the Percy Jackson and the Sea of Monsters audiobook, which I'm actually only still near the start, but like I've got it sped up and I think that's going to be the whole drive pretty much. I'm really enjoying it so far. The narrator, I actually, I think someone said that the Percy Jackson audiobooks weren't very good but I'm actually quite enjoying the narrator. They're doing some really good voices. We've been introduced to Tyson who is a baby cyclops <laughs> and I'm just, I'm having some feels. I, he's very sweet, he's very sweet and very innocent and yeah, I want him to be protected. <laughs> so that's where I'm at. I'm gonna drive to Jade's now and hopefully in the journey finish the audiobook. I have some reading updates. So I've actually finished 
two more books in the Percy Jackson series and started another one. So I'm now on the fourth book, which is The Battle of the Labyrinth. So let's go back a little bit. I said that I was going to try and listen to the audiobook for The Sea of Monsters on my drive to see Jade. I did that. I finished it just before I arrived, so it was perfect timing. I really liked this. This was a really fun audiobook to listen to, and I really liked that we got to see more of Percy's connection to Poseidon and to the sea. We got to meet Percy's half-brother, and I really enjoyed seeing that play out as well. Tyson, just, I think I said already, he's so sweet, and I really like him, and I hope that we get to continue to see more of him. Obviously, I have now read a whole other book and a bit of another one as well, and we are seeing more of Tyson, and I'm so happy about that, and I hope that continues, because I just really like him. He's very sweet. He's very wholesome as a character, and I really love how much he cares about Percy and just wants to help, but also his innocence is a really refreshing approach to how he deals with things, and I love that because he interacts with animals in a very different way, and is very trusting and he's just he's just so sweet I really really like him in this book we go on a journey to try and find Grover who has been taken hostage by the Cyclops whose name I have forgotten is it on the blurb Polyphemus Polyphemus I think so Grover's been taken by the Cyclops and he's trying to masquerade as a Cyclops bride to try and stop the Cyclops from eating them and Percy and Annabeth and Tyson and lots of other characters are going on a mission to try and save Grover basically and to try and get the Golden Fleece. Like it, there's, there's a multitude of missions going on. I'm really enjoying listening to Epic at the moment which is a fantastic musical that is a loose retelling of the Odyssey. There's eight songs out on Spotify at the moment and I'm really hoping we get more because it's been eight songs for quite a while so I don't know if we do have any more coming but I really love that musical and I've loved it for quite a while now and I was listening to it a few nights ago before having started this book and a few of the songs in the musical are about an encounter with this same Cyclops so to be hearing the, the musical and then seeing like a different encounter that's kind of inspired by the original tale of what happened there was quite good fun. In the original tale Odysseus is kind of trapped by the Cyclops and attacks it to get away and when he's asked for his name, he says he's called Nobody, so that when people, when other Cyclops ask the Cyclops who hurt him, he, he says, Nobody hurt me, and they're like, okay, well, if no one hurt you, then we can't really do anything about it, and in this book, we're seeing the Cyclops still, like, searching out Nobody and trying to get revenge on Nobody, and I just thought that was really fun, especially as I'd just been listening to the musical, like, two nights before, so I really liked that tie-in as well. Also, if you haven't checked out the musical, so good. It's loads of different music styles and it's, it's so much fun. Anyway, I had a really good time with this. We got to meet some new characters as well, which I really enjoyed. I just love seeing this series grow and I really loved it and I gave it 4.5 out of 5 stars. Then I read The Titan's Curse. I started this one on the way home from Jade's yesterday as an audiobook and finished it this morning. This one, also excellent. These are all just merging together in my head, like, I, because I'm reading them back to back, they're just becoming one big story, and we are getting, like, gradually Percy Jackson is getting older, we're seeing him work towards this overall prophecy that's been made. The prophecy says that one of the children of the big three is going to basically decide the fate of the future of Olympus and the gods when they turn 16, and Percy Jackson is, is one of those, so we're, we're seeing that kind of happen and the threat there, but also in this book we get introduced to Talia or Thalia. I thought Talia was what was said in the film, but it's... the audiobook narrator is saying Thalia. I'm gonna look this up. Google says Talia. I swear in the film they say Talia. I think they mention her in the film. Maybe I've made that up. I don't know. Anyway, we get introduced to her. She's the daughter of Zeus and she just brings in a whole other dynamic, which is really fun. I love seeing more and more people being brought into this. We also get to meet two twins who have been found by Grover, who are two demigods that we get to find out a little bit more throughout this. But the really exciting thing is we get to meet Artemis. Artemis is probably one of my favourite of the goddesses and I just find her so interesting and this story was so interesting as well because she comes in the form of a 12 year old girl. To start with I didn't love that, I, I kind of had this image in my head of, of Artemis and then she was a 12 year old girl but she kind of explained why that was and that that was like the age that a lot of girls kind of turned to her and she wanted to be able to resonate with that so 
I got why it was done, but we got to see her and her hunters, and I really liked that, and this was very centric around the unity of those teams as they work together to save both Artemis and Annabeth, who's got herself involved in this whole situation as well, and it was just, it was really good. It was very epic action-y. We're really, really building towards this prophecy and what is going to happen here, and Percy having the kind of pressure of this prophecy on him, as is often the case with these kind of like chosen one storylines, that is the pressure of it, as we the reader know that it's probably going to be like coming in the last book. And we're building and building and building and he's getting the skills along the way. And I think this book was really setting up for that. Like, you know, the first book he's establishing what this all is, what this whole new world is, who he is, what his role in it is. The second book was very much like, him really coming into his own and then this book I feel like he knows what's happening he can help other people and he's kind of coming to terms with the overall prophecy as well I gave this one 4.5 out of 5 as well I've given them all 4.5 out of 5 it's just it's such a fun series I have literally only just started this one which is the fourth book this is the battle of the labyrinth so far we're, we're making our way down to the labyrinth we have got a quest I'm excited I will let you know more thoughts as I read more of this one I did actually buy some books yesterday no the day before I don't know what time is anymore I got them on Saturday I got some books I got four books they're all hardback I don't know why I did this to myself but I'm gonna show you what they are <laughs> first up I wanted to feel Christmassy and this is Vlogmas so I got the Christmas Appeal by Janice Hallett I really enjoyed the appeal but I didn't enjoy the Twyford Code I DNF'd it I haven't read the Alberton Angels yet but I think because I like the appeal, I'm going to enjoy this. The appeal was told through email format, and this is very much the same. I enjoy the mixed media element to it. It's a Christmas mystery. Also, it's signed by the author. How neat is Janice Hallett's signature? Like, it's so neat. Anyway, I'll tell you what it's about. One dead Santa, a town full of suspects, will you discover the truth? Christmas in Lower Lockwood and the fairway players are busy rehearsing their festive pantomime Jack and the Beanstalk to raise money for the church roof appeal. But despite the season, goodwill is distinctly lacking among the amateur dramatic enthusiasts. Sarah Jane is fending off threats to her new position as chair, the fiberglass beanstalk might be full of asbestos, and someone is intent on ruining the panto even before the curtain goes up. There's also the matter of the dead body. Who could possibly have had the victim on their naughty list? Join lawyers Femi and Charlotte as they read the read the round robins, examine the emails, and pour over the police transcripts. Will you discover the truth before they do, and will the show go on? I just wanted a Christmassy mystery, you know? They're just fun. I also picked up Brandon Sanderson's Yumi and the Nightmare Painter. I thought this sounded really interesting. I'm pretty sure it's a standalone. This is one of these secret project books, I think they're called. It was a Kickstarter campaign over lockdown, I think. Jade was telling me about it, but I'm quite excited about this also pretty edges, but let me tell you what it's about. There is a world, one of endless nights surrounded by an even deeper darkness, filled with nightmares come to life, twisted shapes that slink to windows and ease open doors, sliding across floors to look down on helpless faces. There is another world, a bright world so it burns, it was so bright it burns, filled with stacked stones that call forth miracles, raised by calloused hands that tremble in their work, drained with each stone lifted, settled, lifted again. Between these worlds, worlds, souls, two souls connect, collide and twine a bridge, a path, a road to both worlds, changing forever. I think that sounds great. I like the idea of the the nightmare painter. I think that sounds really interesting. So I picked this up. I also saw The Wishing Game by Meg Schaefer. This one I've never seen before. I think the cover is really intriguing. It looked like a book about books and it is. So I'm very excited about that because that is one of my favourite subgenres. Is it a genre? genres? Lucy Hart knows better than anyone what it's like to grow up without parents who loved her. In a childhood marked by neglect and loneliness, Lucy found her solace in books, namely the Clock Island series by Jack, Jack Masterson. Now a 26-year-old teacher's aide, Lucy is able to share her love for reading with bright young students, especially seven-year-old orphan Christopher Lamb. Lucy would give anything to adopt Christopher, but even the idea of becoming a family seems like an impossible dream without proper funds and stability. Just when Lucy is about to give up, Jack Masterson announces he's finally written a new book. Even better, he's holding a contest at his house on the real Clock Island, and Lucy is one of the four lucky contestants chosen to compete to win the one and only copy. For Lucy, the chance of winning the most sought-after book in the world means everything to her and Christopher, but first she must contend with the ruthless, ruthless book collectors, wily opponents, and the distractingly handsome and grumpy Hugo Reese, the illustrator of the Clock Island books. Meanwhile, Jack, the mastermind Masterson, is plotting the ultimate twist ending that could change all their lives forever. I think that sounds fun. It's a book about books mystery type of thing. 
It sounds really good. So I picked this one up as well. And lastly, I picked up The Moon Represents My Heart. This is by Pim Wantekawat. This one I saw in the airport in Singapore and was very tempted to buy it. It was a big floppy paperback and I didn't because I was traveling with only hand luggage. I had no room. It was very heavy and I showed restraint. I did not show that same restraint this weekend, but that's fine because I think this sounds really, really good and I'm very excited about this. A love lost in time and eternity to find it. 1927, East London. The first time Tommy and Peggy meet, they are nine years old. He is lost in London's original Chinatown, panicking as he struggles to escape the tangle of Limehouse streets with their road signs in Chinese characters he can't decipher. Where do you come from? Peggy asks him. For Tommy, the answer to that question can never be straightforward because his family share a secret gift. Where's the light going? Because his family share a secret gift, they can travel through time and each must eventually decide how much the present day means to them and how far they are willing to travel to hold on to the people they love. I think it sounds really good. It's, I, the idea of the time travel with the kind of romancy element entwined through it. I don't often like lean towards romance centric books, but the time travel thing is what got me here. I think it sounds great. I'm really excited. And also it's really pretty. <laughs> There's my little updates. I'm excited to keep reading this series. Only two books left. Honestly, when I started this vlog, I was a bit daunted because I didn't think I'd have enough time to read all of these books by the time I needed to finish the vlog. But they're just so addictive. Rick Ryden's writing style is so fun and I'm, I'm having the best time. We're making garlic bread. We're having a chat and we're making garlic bread. Bread. Butter. I forgot the garlic. That would help. <laughs> This is how long my garlic's been in my fridge. It's sprouted a new branch of plant. <laughs> so I thought we'd have a little chat whilst I do this incredibly quick task, but we'll slow it down whilst we chat. I'm just about to go on Patreon sprints, but I'm making some garlic bread to have with my dinner, which is spaghetti bolognese. It's actually a ready meal spaghetti bolognese. I do make really nice spaghetti bolognese and I really love making it actually because it's like the only thing I can cook pretty much. I'm not the best cook. I don't really enjoy cooking, but it's my grandma's recipe and I really like it. But we're having a lazy day today and that's all good. So I'm just making garlic bread. We have one garlic that we're gonna put in a garlic press. This. We scoop a scoopful, good amount of butter into a mug. Ta-da! I always do a little bit too much because I think it's a bit better to have a tiny bit too much than too little. Then we crush the garlic also into the mug. That is a really pathetic amount, but you know, it's fine. We add herbs. I have got dill tops and basil. So what we're chatting about whilst I do this is I signed up to the gym at the start of November. I was really pleased with myself for doing it. Actually, it was at the end of October to kickstart in the start of November. I was really pleased with myself for doing it because I'm having a bit of a loneliness issue at the moment. I'm just feeling a bit sad and lonely and I'm not really, why can't I put the lid on this? I'm not really knowing how to combat that. And like the, the gym thing was something that was allowing me to get out. And whilst I wasn't exactly like interacting with people at the gym, I was going and I was doing that in the morning and it was starting my day off good. Good start, yeah, that, that's the right grammar. Hang on, we're gonna put this in the microwave for like 30 seconds. We'll, we'll pause the talking. Mm, melted butter, I'm not gonna tilt that to show you because I'll make a mess. This brush, <laughs> we we call it the matte head brush because my stepdad's called Matt and he has fairly spiky hair. And years ago, my mum made a little post-it sticker thing of his face, I drew it and put it on this and said it was him. Yeah, so I signed up to the gym. I was really enjoying going. My gym has this thing called a hydro bed thing, a hydro massaging bed, which you basically sit on with water or lay on and it has water under it. I'm not describing this very well. You're not getting wet in it. You're led on top of it. It's like a water bed almost, but not. It's solid. And it massages, massa, mas, mas, massage, mas, it massages you with this water pressure for like 15 minutes. And when I tell you my back pain, has reduced <laughs> since using this thing. I have scoliosis. My back hurts me a lot. I'm used to it. It's just what happens. By the way, I'm now spreading this on the half roll. It is just, it what happens, I'm very used to it. But with the hydro thing, it it still hurt, but it hurt a lot less. And I felt like it was doing really good things. And it, it was going really well. And I was enjoying going to the gym. I wasn't enjoying the exercise, but I was enjoying like the element of going and I was reading at the gym. As you've seen, I've been reading on the treadmill. I've been doing good things or the cross trainer, whatever. I've been reading at the gym. I got an email last night at six o'clock 
telling me that as of midnight last night, or this morning, my gym's shut. The gym I just joined, the gym I just, I just paid for a month's worth of gym, well, you know, for 12 months, essentially. I didn't pay all up front. I, I'm paying over 12 months, but in a 12 month contract, paid a joining fee. That gym, that gym there has just shut. And I'm so sad and I'm so mad. And like, I feel like my mental health's taken a bit of a, a shot with it because I just am feeling in this weird spot at the moment where like, I'm enjoying everything I'm doing and stuff, but I'm just feeling like this weird loneliness and like this kind of, like there's something slightly missing about me and yeah that was something that was was really good for me and now it's just gone and it was definitely the nicest gym that was near to me like I could walk to it it also validated my parking for the main car park in town if I wanted to drive which I have been at the moment because I go so early that it's still dark out so just for safety I've been driving um because I feel a bit better doing that and it just was so perfect it felt so good, it felt so safe, and it just was really nice. And the other two that are in that price range are just not nice at all. They're not, like, they're just really unpleasant. There's several reasons I don't wanna to go to them. And anything else is like at least double the cost of this gym, at least. And now I'm like, ah, because I was enjoying it so much with the element of going and just now it's just been taken away from me without my choice. And I just feel really sad about it. And I just wanted to talk about that. We're now putting a bit of salt, a bit of rock salt on top of the garlic bread, which I think is a must. It just gives it, gives it a little crunch, you know? <laughs> I have three minutes until I'm, I'm going live on my Patreon sprints. I don't know why I'm taking my time with this, but what I have been looking at is um, the option of a David Lloyd gym. It, David Lloyd are very expensive, very expensive gyms. Um, not something that I want to be paying for. However, I can get a discount through work and that, that does help. But I was looking into it and basically it looks like it's more of a social club gym experience. So you get access to the spa, you get to play tennis, you get to go to classes, yoga, which I didn't get with my current gym, and you get the gym access to the swimming pools. And you also get access to things like their book club. I am so desperate for my town to have a book club. I've been looking for ages. I look every now and then just in case something started up. I know I could start something up, but I kind of just want to go to something. And it has a book club. The gym has a book club. So now I'm like, okay, so it's not just a gym you're paying for. You're paying for the social club and you're paying for like the spa. You get to use the sauna and the steam room and like the warming bed things. And it's not as close at all. Like it's completely the other end of town, which isn't going to be great at busier times of the day, but I go in the morning anyway quite early, so I think it might be okay. So I'm now looking at that and I'm like, ah, I don't know what to do. I'm going to view it tomorrow, but <laughs> I just wanted to chat really because I'm now stressed about the fact that that's been removed and I just feel sad about that. And I don't want to go to one of the other like cheaper ones because they're just, there's reasons I didn't pick those ones in the first place. They didn't feel as safe. They didn't feel as good as to what I wanted. And I'm not someone that enjoys going to the gym anyway. So I feel like I need, a gym that's gonna make me feel excited about going and they just weren't quite hitting that. So yeah, just a little, a little rant, a little chit chat whilst we make garlic bread. I'm gonna put it in the oven now for about 12 minutes. Cooking with Beth. I'll let you know how visiting the other gym goes. I mean, it looks like a really nice space and the fact that it has the classes and the yoga, which I would have paid extra to go for yoga classes somewhere else. So actually maybe I've got to consider that. Ah, anyway, I have one minute until Patreon sprint starts. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. Hello! Hi everyone, happy Monday. Welcome to some Monday motivation sprints. I need Monday motivation. <laughs> Ta-da! Yum. Okay, I know this just looks like a bowl of cheese, but there is actual pasta and bolognese under that. But anyway, here's my gourmet dinner. I'm gonna go watch the bowl type and then I'm gonna read on sprints. This is the current setup. My goal is to turn this into a cozy haven. I mean, it's already cozy, but it's a bit uncomfortable. I really need to get new pillows. I got these two big yellow ones as like temporary ones, and that was three years ago. And then these two ones, which I think I got from Next, they have very much become misshapen. And I just feel like I, I fancy a whole change up rather than just changing the inserts. So I need some new cushions. There's a really, really nice one on John Lewis's website that matches the blanket that my grandma made me. And it's like one big long one. So I feel like it would go there maybe. And then I could get two big ones either side, but I'm not sure. I love my sofa so much. It's also from Next, but these cushions I think have had their day. So anyway, I'm gonna make this a little comfy chill zone for reading sprints. 
I bought a new candle at the weekend from Asda. This is Mistletoe Kisses, which I feel like isn't an accurate name to describe the smell because really it smells like a Christmas tree. So I'm going to burn this. I've also got a Christmassy ASMR room on. So I'm embracing the Vlogmas vibes. <laughs> I got my candles, I've got my cushion corner, I've got my book, my blanket, my sprints, my light. I am ready to sit and read. So I just got a knock on my door and I wasn't expecting any deliveries and then this arrived in this massive box. This has been sent to me by Tony's Chocolonies. Is it meant to be pronounced Chocolonely? I always say Chocolonely. Chocolonely. Well, I'm not going to be lonely with this chocolate. <laughs> they sent me their advent calendar, which I'm so excited about. It's absolutely massive. They also sent me a load of their little mini products as well. So we've got a mix of different flavors in this one, and it's all these little miniature ones. And then we've got a similar thing going on in here in this bag, and then little mix of these ones in here and then we've got some of the bars as well and what I also really love about Tony's is they always have a really important message alongside what they're doing so there's a little section on the back here that says spoiler you won't be chomping on Tony's every day to highlight the inequality in the cocoa industry our calendar is unequally divided too I just I think they're great I think they're a great brand the chocolate tastes absolutely yummy and I'm so excited to have one of these advent calendars finally every time I see them in the shops I'm like do I do I and now I have one so this is very exciting it's on my bed because I was trying to unbox it and honestly this is just so big I didn't know where else to put it I'm listening to the last 20 minutes of the audiobook of the Battle of the Labyrinth and I just I'm nearly crying at this book because of all the big epic heroic moments I can't deal with it even just Percy helping Juniper and Grover put out the juniper tree fire and I'm just like I just get emotionally invested in big battle scenes like this which probably means the next book is going to be just great for me because it's called The Last Olympian. Why is it called The Last Olympian? What is going to happen? <laughs> when I first started this reading vlog I didn't expect to love these books as much as I did. I think I expected to enjoy them but I feel like I can't actually physically leave this world now so I'm definitely gonna have to read more from Rick Riordan. I've already read the Magnus Trace Chase series but I haven't read any of the others so I want to now go into those in the correct order and just get completely immersed in all of these extra characters because I need more. Obviously I do still have one book left but I have 20 minutes left of this audiobook and I just I'm just packing at the moment because I'm going back to my family home and I'm just like running around my flat packing because all these big epic moments that are happening. I'm not even telling you anything about the book itself, am I? This one has been chaotic, like the labyrinth has been chaos. There has been so much happening in so many different directions but I've been along for the ride and that's pretty much all my thoughts and feelings on this. Uh, at the end, I don't know how ready I am for book five but I'm just gonna go straight into book five as soon as I finish this one so wish me luck. I have an hour and 45 minutes left in the audiobook for The Last Olympian. I am enjoying it so much but I also have some cleaning and things I need to do around my flat so I am gonna be finishing this book this morning or this afternoon. Well probably I don't even have a watch on. What time is it? It's 11.29. I'm gonna be finishing this book this afternoon and in turn the Percy Jackson series. I have had such a good time with this and I don't want it to end and I think that's why I've kind of stalled the ending of this. I've kind of left this about a week longer than I wanted to because I just, I'm just enjoying it so much. So I have a load of stuff I need to do. I have things I need to tidy up and just generally clean around my flat, but an hour and 45 minutes left in this audiobook in which to do it. This book so far, so many big epic moments. Annabeth got hurt and I was like, that stressed me out. I knew she'd be okay, but it stressed me out. Hestia is the last Olympian. So I'm less worried about the perils <laughs> that Percy is facing now. I don't know, is he classed as an Olympian being a half god, demigod? I guess he's probably not, is he then? So I probably should have thought about that. But Hestia is really nice. <laughs> she's the goddess of home, is she? Is that what she's the goddess of? Yeah, she's the goddess of the home, which I just, I like her. She seems warm and cozy, which would make sense being the goddess of the home. And we are in the middle of this huge, huge battle in New York. Everybody in New York has gone to sleep, which I think is quite a cool way to remove the civilian the threat to civilians, although not entirely removed because they've all just fallen asleep. But it's, I think that's quite a fun way of doing it. And the battle is just all over the place. So chaotic, so brilliant, so many big epic moments. The centaurs have just all come in together to fight. And I'm just, 
I love it when that happens, when you think that all hope is lost and then suddenly, somewhere, something comes in and it saves the day and I just, I love that so much. I'm kind of waiting for the Aries cabin to show up. I feel like they're gonna, at the moment they've said that they're not, they don't stand with what's happening, like they basically are pissed off because of other stuff that's happened. But I, I have a feeling they might show up and it's gonna be some big saviour moment and that is what I want it to be. So let's finish this book and kind of this series. I know that there is so much more to this world and to this series as well and I will be continuing on but for this video this is the last one. So let's do some cleaning and finish this book series. I'm not ready. When I said I was less worried about Percy being in peril obviously he's still going to be in the middle of this huge drama and I'm assuming he's going to have this big final fight with Kronos but I meant that I was kind of more thinking that he was going to somehow end up as the last Olympian and what that meant for everybody else but I didn't really think that through properly in advance thinking of my theory <laughs> so I'm not as worried about that right now basically is what I meant I just kind of forgot to actually elaborate on that point and just went on to talking about something else anyway it is cleaning time I love the fact that even though there's these big dramatic perilous moments happening, Dionysus still cannot get Percy Jackson's name right and calls him every name under the sun other than Percy Jackson. I just really enjoy the way that Rick Riordan inserts humour into these books. There's a dragon that's just been introduced and it said that it can only be defeated by a child of Ares. So I think the Ares cabin are gonna show up soon and I'm very excited about it. Okay, it isn't a dragon, it's a draken, which is apparently a lot worse. <laughs> finished my cleaning and I finished my book. <sighs> okay, I think the last time I was speaking to you I was saying about waiting for the Aries cabin to rock up. The way that that happened, I just, I can't get enough of those moments when it's like, you know, when, when it's last resort, nobody knows how they're gonna get out of a situation and then something happens that changes it. I love those moments so much and that is how the Aries cabin came in and Oh, oh, Clarice, and just everything about that, like, the whole scene. <sighs> Selena Beauregard, I think her name was, basically sacrificing herself in the middle of that scene, and just everything, everything there. And, like, that was very much a moment of friendship and the power of friendship kind of thing as well, and I love that that's a consistent theme throughout this book. The whole big battle at the end and Luke and all of the gods and goddesses getting together and deciding like to change things and to accept their children and bring them to Camp Half-Blood and give them that opportunity. I just, I love how much this has opened up for obviously the other books in the Rick Ryden universe and I'm so excited to read them all. I need to look at the right order to read them. I really like the little details in this as well. Like there was a very brief scene in which Percy goes to speak to the river gods and offers them half of a sand dollar each for them to help. And the sand dollar helps them clean up their rivers. And I just love that there's like those little messages and moments in this as well. I gave this one five out of five stars. I think I gave all the others 4.5 out of five stars. So I'm gonna say it's like a 4.5 to five star series just unputdownable, so addictive, so funny, so digestible and brilliant for any age, I think. I just, I love the humour and I think that was done in such a great way. I love the friendships, I love the character developments. Annabeth and Percy, that was such a slow burn of waiting for them to kind of acknowledge how they felt about each other and I'm so glad that that happened. Rachel Dare taking on the Oracle and Grover getting acknowledged and put on the council, just all of these moments 
it just makes me feel happy. I need to work out the rest of the reading order for the other books because I need more from this universe. I have read the Magnus Chase series, I think I said, the trilogy before and had only read one book in this before. So those that's all. And now I've read the whole of this series, bar the newest one that's come out that I think I meant to read that after reading other books anyway, I think I was told. I need to check orders and I will and I will continue reading this series if you would like me to vlog the continuation of me reading like I'm saying this series like I mean the Rick Ryden universe like if you want to see those in vlogs as well let me know if you have enjoyed this vlog I am so excited for the Disney Plus series I'm so excited do you know what as well this one did that surprised me is it killed off more characters than I expected it to and I'm kind of not that I wanted those characters to die but I quite like that it did that because it meant that the stakes were higher and I feel like that makes books less predictable like when you have a book where you just kind of know that all the heroes are going to survive I think that it doesn't make the book boring by any means but it does mean that you kind of assume that your main characters and your main side characters will be safe whereas in this you kind of assume the main characters are going to be okay in the end but you're not really sure for the the survival of all of the other characters and I quite like that it did that as much as I'm not on board with who was killed but you know it's fine <laughs> also the dog what was the dog called the hellhound mrs I completely forgot what her name was the hellhound oh the hellhound was just I was really worried about that dog and I just I love it I love it so much Blackjack the Pegasus as well great character Mrs O'Leary is the name of the hellhound I had a flick through Mrs O'Leary and Blackjack I just oh I loved everybody Tyson loved Tyson so much I he was just a shining delight in this whole series in short I loved it it is a 4.5 to 5 star series I am so glad that I read it for this video and I am so excited for the tv series in like two weeks by the time I'm finished filming this but in one week I think from the time you're watching this I'm so excited thank you so much for watching this video I really hope that you've enjoyed it it's been a saga of a reading experience for me have had the best time don't forget that Gavin from Gavin Reads All formerly How to Train Your Gavin is also doing a Percy Jackson reading vlog at the moment we accidentally were doing this at similar times so I'm gonna leave Gavin's channel link down below thank you so much for watching this video and thank you so much to my patrons for your constant support it means the world to me and if you would ever like to sign up to my patreon it is linked down below thank you so much for watching i will see you in the next one